So let's talk about quantum oracle. Okay, so what is quantum oracle? As I said, it encodes the problem that you want to solve, right? So I say quantum oracle is a black box. But if it is a black box, then how do I implement? Because I want to demonstrate. That's why you need to create your own oracle, okay, in the implementation. But in the real quantum computing, you either there will be some, uh, for some oracle, you'll be able to construct yourself, right? Uh, uh, re, uh, the point is this, right? If you can, if you know exactly the oracle is, then uh, you probably know what the function is already, right? <laughs> because I know what the oracle is. But it's also possible, you know how to construct the oracle, but it takes very long, long time to compute the oracle. It doesn't mean that, for example, I know how to construct a circuit of 1 billion transistors, but what is the results from input to output? Actually, it's going to take a very long time to simulate, right? To calculate, right? I know how to construct, but doesn't that mean that I know the question right away? So this is a little bit uh, difficult. But anyway, now we treat the Oracle as a black box, which contain the information, okay? It does have the information of f of x. Now this f of x is not limited to Deutsch algorithm. It's the f of x in any quantum computing algorithm we are dealing with, okay? Related, this f of x is related to the problem to be solved. Okay, any problem. And this is a gate. And you just asked me, does it have to be unitary? It needs to be a unitary gate. So that it is reversible. Because we are doing quantum computation, right? We are not doing measurement, right? Now, so if I ask you, if the oracle, right, it is UF, the x may be m qubit, just now you told me that to look at Deutsch Georgia algorithm, right? The input is m qubit, right? The output is one, right? But here I just say that this is, uh, in general, I say this is n, n equal to one in Deutsch Georgia algorithm, right? A m not equal to n, is this reversible? No, right? It's not a square matrix. Think about this. It's just talking about this. This is X. I have M row. And this is Y. I have N row. The matrix needs to be what? M, N by M. Right? This is UF. Right? So it's not reversible. Because you cannot find the inverse of this non-square matrix, right? So this is not good. Right? You cannot have something like this. You cannot say I have this xn and then output is ym, right? Because this is very natural, right? I, the input is x and output is y. Then I create an oracle. I'm not really creating a function. I just uh, create the oracle, right? It still might not, uh, this won't work. Okay, is that okay? So with this, then we have the first type of oracle called exclusive oracle, which just, you just saw. Again, I have two versions. One is MSB on top, another is LSV at bottom. We were looking at this one, but it doesn't matter. The main point is, if your X is N bits and Y is N bits, to make them square, I can have N plus N bits going in and N plus N bits going out. And I make the input as X and Y and output as X and Y exclusive F of X. And this will be a square matrix, and this will be reversible. Let me show you how it is reversible, okay? If I apply f, u of f on x and y, what do I get? 
based on this picture. Let's look at this one. What do I get? It's given. Yeah, x has n bits, y has m bits. But the total input of the oracle is n plus m. Okay, what's the output? Yeah, it's written there. This is the definition of this oracle. Is this okay? Now, I apply this one more time. What if I apply UF one more time? Isn't that this is the same as applying X, Y, exclusive F of X? What I'm saying is just say that I apply the Oracle one more time to the output, right? you get based on this one by definition now the input is just nice saying that the input is now x y exclusive f of x what should be the output based on the definition what happened to the msb doesn't change right what happened to the lsb yeah the new y what is the new y now This is the new y, exactly. Am I right? So this is equal to x, y exclusive f of x, exclusive f of x. Why is f of x exclusive f of x? Well, try. What if it's zero? Zero exclusive zero is what? One, one exclusive one is what? So this is always zero. Then zero's exclusive y is what? What is zero exclusive y? Huh? Y, always y, right? So what does it mean? If you apply the quantum oracle twice to xy, it is xy. Then it means uf, uf equal to i. If a matrix multiply another matrix give you identity, then it means this matrix is the inverse of, your, of itself. So here prove that it has inverse. So it is reversible. So what I've done here just to prove you that this UF is reversible. So, but it's not necessarily unitary, a pretty long, I don't want to prove it here, you look at the textbook. It's also unitary. But the main point is you look at this construction, why this is reversible. It's by construction. Because that how we define its function, let us to get it this feature. You see what I mean? Because we define it as y exclusive f of x as the output of the LSB. That's why it is reversible. So it's designed by construction, right? Some smart people came up with this. If you want to do an exclusive quantum oracle, usually it is in this form and we are going to use it. Okay. And another is phase oracle, but I will cover in the next uh, class. Okay. Let's stop here. Oracle does not contain all the information, right? It's just like the, the meaning of the oracle in the real life, right? The God or the nature reveals something to you, but not the full information. Same here, this oracle contains the information of fx, but it does not compute f of x. It only tells you what is y exclusive f of x. Now, so equally, I can have an oracle called face oracle. What does it do? The input is x. The output is also x, 
but the phase is changed by negative 1 to the power f of x. Again, it does not tell you all the information, but it gives you some information about f of x. From here, you cannot compute f of x, right? So it gives you some information of x, f of x by embedding f of x in the negative 1. Okay. This oracle also is equal uh, to its own inwards. And that is what I want to talk about today, right? Uh, first of all, let's try like what we have done before. Apply u f of x, I mean u f on. And by the way, why this one will work? Because the input has n qubit, output also has n qubits, right? So you don't have, you still use a square ma matrix. By definition, uf applied to x equal to negative 1 to the power f of x, x, right? Then I do the same thing, I apply it two times. I use the same method to prove it. It gives me this, right? I apply the first one becomes negative one to the power x and then x. Is that okay? And again, what is negative one to the power x? Is it a number, a vector, or what? Just a lumber, right? So if you apply, if you have the lumber here, I can take it out. Right? Because UF is a matrix. Correct? Now I do it again. What is UF? To the X, by definition, is negative 1 to the power F of X x right i should sorry i should put the uh, n outside because it's talking about the number of qubits so this is equal to negative one to the power two f of x so is two f of x uh, an odd number of even number mm -hmm. even right it must be even so let's review you already know Negative 1 to the power f of x is equal to 1 if f of x is even. And it's equal to negative 1 if f of x is odd. Okay? So this is equal to x. Okay, so again, I showed that uf times uf equals to i. So uf equals to uf inverse. So this again is reversible. Okay, now, so in the Deutsch algorithm, we use an exclusive oracle. In the next algorithm, which is the Groover's algorithm, we will use the phase oracle. Yeah. Because it changed the phase. Yeah, which is the phase of the vector, which is negative 1 equals to e to the power i pi. The phase is 180 degree shift. That's why it's called phase oracle. Yeah, good question. Yeah, and this is called exclusive because we have exclusive sign, right? Is that okay? Yeah. What are the little diagonal dashes? Diagonal that near where say again? Yeah, yeah, on that line. Oh this one. Okay. It means this is a group of nine. So this is one qubit. And when I dash n, it means there is a n qubit. It's just that we save the time and try to draw it. It's a group, like in digital circuit, a group of wire. Okay. 
Now you have parts, right? And bits, wire. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. So when you have to do the second one, 